Okay, we have a Taylor integral from the MIT integration B2024. This was regular season problem number 20. We have the integral from zero to infinity of 80x cubed minus 60x to the fourth plus 14x to the fifth minus x to the sixth times e to the minus x dx. Okay, what we actually have here is something pretty straightforward. When we have a polynomial multiplied times e to the minus x, this is clearly set up for integration by parts. The only thing is because we've got so much going on here, how do we do this in two minutes? How do we do this efficiently without making this a really tedious problem? So really my focus on this one is looking for kind of a shortcut, some way to make this a little quicker. I'm gonna take this polynomial, I'm just gonna label this first. I'm gonna label this here P0. And what I wanna do on this is integration by parts. I'm gonna use the DI method, tabular integration over here to the right. I'm gonna integrate e to the minus x, and I'm gonna differentiate this polynomial but notice we're gonna to have to do integration by parts multiple times in order to get some simplification. Okay, so what we've done here in filling out our table, you'll notice for when we integrate e to the minus x, we just have a minus come out, and then when we do it again, the minus is canceled and we're back to plus. So we, have, so we have our sign just changing for every integral down here. Of course, with integration by parts, our sign to the left, that's just gonna change like this. And then for all these p-values, you notice when you differentiate a polynomial, you get back a polynomial. So for the first derivative, so for the polynomial we get for our first derivative, I'm calling that p1, p2, et cetera. But notice when you take this, if you differentiate seven times, you're gonna differentiate this all the way to zero. So for our last row here, we've gotten this all the way, this is gonna be an integral, but because we have our zero here, this integral is just gonna be zero, so we don't have to worry about integrating again. We can just go to our solution on the diagonals here. And now from here, rather than evaluating each of these individually, let's kind of generalize it because all these are gonna be polynomials times e to the minus x. Notice in every case, we're gonna have a minus sign in front because of the interchanging situation. Like here we have a minus sign, here we have the minus sign coming from here, here it's coming from here. So in every case, we're gonna be evaluating minus p for some polynomial, one of these polynomials times e minus x, and we're evaluating this from zero to infinity. Now, evaluating this at infinity, what we can do is we can actually look at this as minus p. We can take this into the denominator and as minus p over e to the x. Now, you could do this as a limit, evaluating the limit as x approaches infinity, but we can just kind of do it by looking at it because we have an exponential in the denominator. When you plug in infinity here, that's going to be growing much faster than any polynomial. So it's going to happen in every single one of these cases. This first part is always going to be zero. And then for the second part, evaluating it's zero. Minus times minus is going to give me a plus here. When we plug a zero and e to the minus zero, that's just gonna be one. So we're just gonna be left with p, but the p, the polynomial, is gonna to need to be evaluated at zero. But now since this first part is zero, we've really kind of reduced our problem, is all we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of these polynomials, and all we need to do is add them up, evaluated at zero. Okay, now for our first term, p zero at zero, this is gonna be easy, we have our polynomial right here. If you plug in zero to this, you're just gonna get back zero for this term. Next, for p1 of zero, what's gonna happen, if you take a derivative of this, these terms over here aren't gonna really matter. We can kind of focus on the lowest power. This here, when we take a derivative, is gonna become 240x squared. So like our lowest power on this polynomial is gonna be x squared. But still, when you plug zero into it, the whole thing's going to zero. Then for p2, again, when you take a derivative, of this x squared term is gonna become an x term, but still you plug zero into it, this whole thing's going to zero. When I first did this, I was thinking that all these terms might be going to zero and we could just finish this really quick. But then let's take a look at the third derivative and just kind of focus on 80x cubed. So for that one, what's gonna happen? We're gonna have our 80 in front and then we'll just look at the derivatives of x cubed. So for like starting at x cubed, you take the first derivative, you get three x squared. You take the second derivative, you get six x. You take the third derivative, you get just six. Mm -hmm. But the thing really to notice here is six is gonna just be three factorial. So what we can do for the third derivative of this is write this as 80 times three factorial. And actually I can put this in here because notice all the other terms are still gonna be going to zero. There's gonna be an X left. So you plug a zero and all that stuff is gonna be zeroed out. And for our P3 term, we're just left with 80 times three factorial. And it turns out we can just use this same simplification in every case because ignoring the coefficient, when you just have something like X to the N and you differentiate it a bunch of times, Eventually, you're gonna differentiate this down to n factorial, assuming, of course, that n is gonna be a positive integer. So then coming over to our fourth derivative, what's gonna happen is we can really just focus on this 60x to the fourth term, because for this term, we already differentiate this down to a constant, so we differentiate again, this is gonna become zero, and these terms are still gonna have x's in them, so those are gonna be zero. So what I can do using the same trick is we can actually write this as, write this as a minus sign, I can write this as minus 60 
using the exponent, we can write this as times four factorial. And then doing the same thing here for the fifth one, we get 14 times five factorial. And for the last one, we get minus just six factorial. So now all we need to do is just kind of simplify this and finish it off. Of course, this is all zero. 80 times three factorial, well, this is six. So our first term is 480. Multiplying this up, four factorial is 24 times 60. This gives me a minus 1440. Here, five factorial is 120 times 14. This is gonna become a plus 1680. And then finally, six factorial is just gonna be 720. Adding together these positive terms, we get 2160. Subtracting the negative terms, we get minus 2160. And so for my final solution of this, we get just zero. Okay, there you have it. Good integral from MIT 2024. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.